Taking on an Auburn team that is coming off a three-game sweep at the hands of Tennessee. And really a opposites as far as their pitching and their hitting. Really good pitching. They're hitting not so good. Yeah, they have some incredible freshman pitchers. What you're going to see is Shelby Lowe today in the circle. But they also have Matty Penta, and they've led the way. Tons of really, really good innings pitch for them. High strikeout ratios. Unfortunately, it's the offense and the bats that just haven't come through with that timely hitting to get their freshman studs enough wins in the circle this season. Yeah, they certainly have had some close calls. I've lost quite a few one-run games. The Auburn Tiger lineup starting off with... Alyssa Revere, Tyler King, who has been hitting some leadoff, is now in the second spot for them. Becky Dean, the head coach. This is a team that's hitting only 208 during SEC games. And their task this afternoon will be to try to solve Shelby Sunseri, who is in the circle for LSU. Yeah, Shelby Sunseri coming in with a 2.17 ERA. She's got some really good stuff. She's going to have a really nice drop ball. That's going to be her biggest go-to pitch. It's really strong movement. But she's able to work all zones still. She can throw to all quadrants pretty successfully. And she competes in those quadrants, meaning she's going to have good movement, good spin in each part of the strike zone. And Shelby Sunseri actually graduated this weekend uh, with her degree. And uh, Beth Torino now... Uh, in her 10th season, unbelievably, in charge of LSU earlier this year when her 400th game as the head coach has taken her team to four Women's College World Series, the last one in 2017. And her, and her team, like Mickey Dean's team, has had some struggles in the batter's box. Mickey Dean in his fourth year after five very successful years at James Madison where he had some really good players, including Megan Good, who was the National Player of the Year back in 2017. But uh, this is a guy, boy, we talked to him, Kayla, yesterday, and uh, kind of sounding like a head coach who knows his team is struggling and looking for some answers, uh, hoping to get in, as you mentioned, in the open on the uptick as they head towards the SEC tournament. Oh, without a doubt. And I think Mickey Dean understands that his team has some weaknesses, without a doubt, in their offense. But the key is going to be to get that timely hit, just waiting for somebody to come up with a runner in scoring position and come up with the clutch hit that they've missed all season long. They're underway, 84 degrees as the first pitch comes into Alyssa Rivera. Senior who actually already has her undergraduate degree. Rivera had struggled uh, a few weeks ago, but Coach Dean says she's in a better place than she was three or four weeks ago. Became the 11th Auburn Tiger with 200 career hits earlier this season. She's been a really good contact hitter for them. Rivera has only struck out three times in SEC games and actually has their highest batting average for any Auburn Tiger in SEC play. She's down one and two. Just gets her bat on it and it nestles nicely into the glove of Taylor Pleasance. You know, we've seen throughout this entire season that Mickey Dean's just really trying to mix up his lineup, waiting for somebody to step up, especially at the top. We've seen Tyler King there, McKenna Dowell there, and Alyssa Rivera as of late, just trying to find a hot hitter that can get things going for this team. Mentioned that he had so many opportunities to win games. Now Tyler King batting number two this afternoon and playing left field. She started her career at East Carolina. Pitch just out of the zone. Morgan Cummins behind the plate, trying to get a nice frame on it. Beth Torina talks a lot about her catcher and what a terrific receiver she is. 
So it changes the game, the way she handles things behind the plate. That's on the ground. Boy, a little bit of a hesitation and she's saved. Tidwell might have had trouble getting a handle on the ball and King showing her speed, beats it out. Yeah, Tidwell trying to field this routine ground ball. Just looks like it eats her up a little bit, but just really not a lot of sense of urgency to get rid of this ball. Looks down the line to see where Tyler King is, and because she looks, she just loses the opportunity to get an out right here, and that's a good call, barely safe. Tyler King, a one-out base runner. That has been scored an error on Tidwell, and E4 on the second baseman brings up Sidney Cox, who is a freshman out of Asheboro, North Carolina. Even though a young player has really caught the attention of head coach Dean, likes that she doesn't make excuses, just goes out there, keeps working on her game, swings through it. Yeah, and I like what Coach Dean said. Is She's a freshman that leads by example. She knows her role, maybe not vocal yet, but it's to do all the right things and to carry herself with an, a maturity that rubs off on the other teammates. Yeah, rather unusual for a freshman to come in and be that influential, but she's down 0-2 with King over first. Bounced in, Cummins able to come up with it, and then the throw got away momentarily from Sunseri. How long did it take you to... Get your voice going at Alabama when you went in as a fresh-faced freshman. Uh, it took some time, without a doubt. I think you need to earn your stripes before you can go and, and say things. You need to prove it by doing everything right early. That's a grounder up to Pleasance, who throws across to get Cox. King advances on the throw. Two away. Uh, but I think that's the key, and Sydney Cox says it really well, is you have to make sure that you're walking the walk before you talk the talk. And she's done that so far in her career. And then once you start to solidify yourself as a consistent player, a consistent person each and every day, you're doing the right things, that's when you can start to break through from a vocal perspective and earn the respect of your teammates. And she has certainly done that so far in her very young career. Now McKenna McDowell, or McKenna Dowell, excuse me, comes in. How about in cleanup this afternoon? Coach Dean has really moved her around in the in his lineups as well. Depending on the pitching matchups, deciding to go with her in the four spot this afternoon. Yeah, and for all these Auburn hitters, you can see how consistently that Shelby Sinceri is going to throw that drop ball. So they're going to really have to adjust, whether that's moving up in the box, trying to get their barrels to drop a little bit in the zone got to find a way to jump on that pitch because until they prove that they can hit it, she's going to keep throwing it all day long. Sari coming in, 7-6 and six on the season. This is senior weekend in Baton Rouge. She is ahead 1-2. And I like it there, Shelby Sinceri, not afraid to go outside with the drop ball in the previous pitch, and then this last pitch coming right in tight inside on McKenna Dowell, really challenging her on both halves of the plate, trying to mix it up and keep her guessing. Another one, two. Fights it off. Good putting, job fighting off pitches, huh? Yeah, putting together a really quality at bat. You can tell that she's trying to, to sit on that drop ball a little bit, trying to get her barrel on plane with that pitch. She's actually been a little bit under it, as opposed to her teammates who were rolling over some ground balls. 
Well, that little change of speed got her to end the inning. Well, the one-out error doesn't do any harm. Scoreless going to the bottom of the first. Shelby and Sari pulling the string to get the third out of the inning. That was nasty. We are back at LSU. Auburn has a couple of really good freshman pitchers. Shelby Lowe, one of them, and she gets the start today. Yeah, Shelby Lowe's having one of the best performances throughout her freshman season of anybody that's ever pitched in Auburn, and she's having a great season comparatively to all other freshmen in the entire country. But she's going to come in. She's going to throw in the mid-60s, not going to blow it by you, but a lefty with really, really good command and spin. She's got great movement on her pitches. She can throw pretty much anything, rise, curve, backdoor curve. So it's sprinkling a drop ball and a change up, but it's her command, her ability to hit the corners that makes her so successful. Yeah, spectacular, especially considering that she is a freshman. And speaking of spectacular, Leah Andrews, what a career she has had. The senior from Oldsmar, Florida, who uh, comes in, had five hits in her last three games, really gets things started for this Tigers lineup. But rather atypical for LSU. They have struggled as a team, hitting just... 264 on the season. Only Auburn has a skinnier batting average. And Andrews, as usual, right off the bat, shows that uh, she can put some pressure on the defense. Yeah, she's a, a true triple threat, and she's as athletic and fast as they come in this game, and she has the ability to drop a drag. Great, great infield slap, some bounce. But her pop this year has been really impressive, too. She worked in the offseason on trying to get some strength into her bat, create a new option for herself at the plate. And we've seen that this year with a couple of home runs. I mean, she's expanded her game. One one pitch on the way from Shelby Lowe. And forget it. Maybe even if it was fielded, it would have been a forget it. Makes the wide turn, and Andrews is on with the leadoff single. Yeah, this is just precision at its finest. Lefty Slapper knows exactly what she wants to do with this pitch. Low in the zone, peppers it right back up the middle with really good control on her barrel. Picks up a nice, easy single to start the game off for LSU. So Leah Andrews raised her average 11 points in that series last weekend against Arkansas. Well, welcome those of you who've been watching Beach Volleyball. You are now in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, at least vir virtually, where LSU is taking on Auburn. Pam Ward along with Kayla Bro, uh, Leah Andrews, as she is wont to do, got a leadoff single and then stole second base after Auburn failed to score in the top of the first. Shelby Lowe, a really good freshman pitcher in the circle for LSU, and that is a tremendous play. Aspen Godwin able to lay out, and Briggs is retired. Sierra Briggs trying to bunt Aaliyah Andrews over to third, but the play here from Aspen Godwin to be able to turn her body and go chase down this ball behind her. It's elevated in the air a little bit. Super athletic, really great reaction to this pitch and this ball off the bat of Sierra Briggs. So Godwin coming up with the Huge play for the first out of this inning. And that brings up Taylor Pleasance, the shortstop for LSU. This is the final weekend of the regular season in the SEC tournament. It will get underway on Tuesday. In a little town called Tuscaloosa. LSU has played one of the most brutal schedules in the country. In fact, number one strength of schedule. That Tarina's club had some scheduling issues because of other teams. COVID problems. That's going to drop in front of the left fielder, King. And Aaliyah Andrews has no trouble at all scoring from second. Well, this is what... 
LSU has been looking for. Taylor Pleasant is a big RBI producer for this team, and with a runner in scoring position, she comes up, takes this drop ball, stays inside of it, and just flares it to the left field gap. And she knows that if this ball falls, it's an easy score with Allegiant Leah Andrews' with speed on second base. And this is what they were missing in the Arkansas series last week is early run production, somebody getting on base, and coming up with that key hit to get the runs across. They drop two out of three to Arkansas. Mary Half was just really on her game in the circle as Arkansas clinched at least a share of the SEC title on this field last weekend. And as you mentioned, Aaliyah Andrews, kind of classic single, stolen base, and then just a, a single in the left field, and she scores easily to give them the one nothing lead. Amanda Doyle, the veteran third baseman, batting cleanup this afternoon for the LSU Tigers. Doyle, one of the super seniors who came back to take advantage of her last year of eligibility after the COVID shutdown last year. And I like what Beth Tarina said about Doyle. She said she's a picture of consistency in an inconsistent game. I, I love that quote too. And, and that's so perfect to sum up her career and her presence every single day. She comes to the field and she's just steady. She brings the same energy, same mentality. She doesn't get too high or too low. And that's exactly what you want. She said it's a rare thing. She said she'd take uh, an Amanda Doyle in every single <laughs> recruit for the rest of her coaching career. Uh, high praise indeed for Doyle, who is from Santa Clarita, California, starting since her freshman season. Pretty much getting better every year. Down one and two. Fouls that one away. And Coach Serena said if she had more Amanda Doyle, she would have less gray hair. <laughs> Some fewer things to worry about when you have players of her caliber. Doyle has already fouled off four pitches in this at, at bat. And early in this game, I really like what LSU is doing against Shelby Lowe. Shelby Lowe is a very talented pitcher with a ton of spin, ton of movement. She'll be able to change speeds, but they're making her work early in this ball game. They're jumping on the right type of pitches. They're not letting her get those chase pitches because they're hitting early in the count. Will fouls off her sixth pitch of the at-bat. These two teams have not met since 2018. LSU swept that series 3-0. Auburn's last win was in 2017, at winning it, as far as winning a game, and also their last series win against LSU came in Baton Rouge in 2017. That time, Doyle couldn't catch up. So the first strikeout for Shelby Lowe. And we welcome you to Baton Rouge, Pam Ward, along with Kayla Bro. You know her. She was an All-American at Alabama. And Kayla, here we are already in the last weekend of the regular season. And and really, both these teams trying to, to tune up for the, at least the SEC tournament. Yeah, a big weekend ahead in the SEC tournament. This is an opportunity to kind of clean things up, really tighten up your rosters, and make sure you're ready to go for elimination softball. I mean, we're in mayhem. This is the most exciting time of the year now. <laughs> Certainly is. Uh, the, of course, ESPN will have every pitch again of the SEC tournament upcoming. The road to Tuscaloosa. Getting a little bit shorter. Things start up with the 12-13 seed games on Tuesday. That's a swing and a miss for Georgia Clark. LSU right now sitting in the seven position, but as we head into the into this last weekend, there's still there could be a lot of movement trying to get into that top four spot, and that's coveted. And to get the double buy, you wouldn't have to play until Thursday if you're in the top four. That's a big deal at this point in the season. Everybody's kind of banged up. Having a day or an extra couple days off is, is really important. 2-1 to Clark. 
And we'll see who on top, thanks to Taylor Pleasant's RBI single. She's over at first with two away. Beats it on the ground in the shadow. The third baseman, Kepke, throws over to get the last out of the inning. But Taylor Pleasance with an RBI single. LSU takes the early lead. See the semifinals in the championship on ESPN2, May 14th and the 15th. And Florida is still trying to, to get a share of the SEC regular season championship. And uh, Arkansas on this field won a two out of three last weekend to clinch their first championship. So still a lot going on, playing for seeding. Yeah, this is a big weekend right here. It's going to be in Gainesville. It's going to be a tough game for Texas A&M to sneak away, but they've got a, a great start up 3-0 in the third inning so far. You can see there's 21-5 all time. Yeah, I was going to say, Arkansas is a big Texas A&M fan this weekend because oh, if Florida sweeps them, Florida will sweep the number one seed, pardon me, and bump Arkansas down to a two. Lifted into the sky, fighting the sun. Briggs gets Garcia for the first out of the second inning. Yeah, Arkansas is having a great weekend. This is their bye weekend, so they're off this weekend. They're not playing a non-conference opponent, so they are taking the weekend off and just getting to sit back and watch everybody else battle it out before we get to the tournament, hoping that A&M is able to sneak a game away from Florida and find themselves in the one seed for the tournament. Yeah, and I would imagine you wouldn't want to share that regular season championship anyway, <laughs> Absolutely right? Absolutely not. Absolutely oh, not. Fun. You want that outright. <laughs> and it's interesting because Florida and Arkansas didn't play each other in the regular season. So yes. you could have the opportunity to see them battle it out in the SEC tournament, depending on where Florida finishes and how the tournament that would goes. Be tremendous. That would be tremendous if they did meet. Here's uh, Michaela Packer now. Freshman. After four straight lefties in the Auburn batting order, now the rest with righties, starting with Garcia, who, was, who just flew out. And Michaela Packer's an interesting, team. she's an interesting, <laughs> because she's a right-handed hitter, but she throws lefty. So one of those rare uh, lefty thrower, righty hitters, and she is fast, she can fly. So even though she's not a, a lefty in the box, she can make things happen with her speed. Yeah, that's very unusual, especially in softball where usually you want your, your speed to be on the left side of the batter's box. 1-1. One, one. And you saw the third baseman, Doyle, playing in to get Packer. Shelby Sanseri in the circle. In the first of three games here for LSU. coming in 11 and 10 in the SEC boy such a such a, such a tough stretch very very difficult strength of schedule because of you know some of the COVID postponements some of the the non power five schools they expected to play instead they had to play the the teams that could play in those tournaments and like for instance Alabama they did not play them during the regular SEC season but got them a couple of times in the non-conference portion. Madison Kepke, who is playing third base. Well, that Tarina squad, as you, you mentioned it, has been through the gauntlet. They have played 30 top 25 RPI teams, split them all, but the number one strength of schedule, fourth RPI in the entire nation. And they have bid to host in the opening weekend of the tournament, Doyle. That completes an eight pitch inning as Doyle throws her out. I'm king of the well, welcome back to the senior weekend here, part of the senior day festivities. And the seniors getting there. It's Taryn Antoine, number 16, who is from Alexandria, Louisiana. Can't come back next year, but she's going to 
call it a career after this season. A lot of tears, a lot of hugs. Caleb Bro, the University of Alabama, you had a senior day. Do you what do you remember about it most? Uh, it, it's emotional, and it's it's an interesting weekend when everybody's focused on you. It's the culmination of your career. You kind of see what you've done the last four years kind of flash through your mind. And, you know, you spend so much time with the program because for a lot of these girls, they've been committed since they were freshmen and sophomores in high school. So you plan so much of your time, your life, planning to go to the school, and then all of a sudden, in a blink of an eye, yeah. you're standing there, and it's the last weekend at home that you're going to play. And it's definitely emotional, but I just remember feeling so much grati gratitude towards everything, my career, the fans in the stands, my teammates. It just it was a great weekend. Yeah, some great teams, fantastic teams at the University of Alabama. And now we're in the bottom of the second inning. Ray Gutierrez gets a good swing on that 0-1 pitch, but nestling under it, King gets it for the first out. And it's interesting the way LSU is handling this with Coach uh, Beth Torino. She says it's senior weekend, not senior day. They're honoring two a day, and this is... Well, let's use the, I'll use the word sweet. She wants that because she wants the seniors to be able to play in the game. Like Antoine is starting and, and batting ninth today, uh, a senior who uh, has not gotten a lot of playing time, certainly as her career has gone on. So that's nice to, to give them an opportunity to get out on that field one, one last time, really. Since yeah, Sari not only pitches, she hits. Go ahead. Yeah, no, I think it's important, too, to get players in and show that, for Coach Serena, show how grateful you are that they chose you and chose this university and to have them to be able to represent your school and your program one last time on the field is a big deal. Shelby Lowe goes upstairs to quickly get ahead of Sanceri. Speaking of seniors, graduated along with Mary Beth Gorsuch, another pitcher, graduated today, got her bachelor's in sports administration. All right, Shelby Lowe looks like she's pretty good. Yeah, after the first two batters that she's faced today in Aaliyah Andrews and Taylor Pleasance, I mean, she has looked to be on a roll. You can see right there, this is just enough movement to get some Sari to swing underneath the ball. A little rise, kind of a lower rise. But again, just has a ton of late break that is so deceiving for a hitter, and that's why you see a swing and a miss right there. She is from Carrollton, Alabama, two-time Gatorade High School Player of the Year. Goes upstairs to get Cummins to swing through. One of the 30 finalists is Shelby Lowe for the NFCA National Freshman of the Year. The top 10 will be trimmed down on May 13th. First in the SEC in ERA as a freshman. I mean, she's really good, and it's so impressive to see her as a freshman be as good as she is, especially with her command. She can spot pretty much any ball where she wants it to. She has such a, a broad variety of pitches that she can throw, so she's not subject to just having to pound one pitch over and over again. She can really mix it up. And one big thing that stands out when you talk about Shelby Lowe is when she was growing up, her dad and her family made it a, a point to make sure before you move on to learning a next pitch, you master the one that you were working on. So it wasn't about how many pitches I can throw. It was about how well I can throw each pitch in my arsenal. And she just kept building that arsenal until you see what she's got today. Yeah, she really seems to be getting into a bit of a rhythm, as you mentioned, after uh, get the leadoff single to Andrews, RBI single to Pleasance. Because it's interesting, sometimes you talk to people and you say, well, what does your pitcher throw? And they will tell you every pitch that you know was ever on this earth. But it doesn't mean <laughs> yes. you necessarily throw them well. Oh, there she goes. Third strikeout, five in a row now, set down by Lowe. Yeah, you talk about having pitches and throwing them well. This is Shelby Lowe right here. Two big swing and misses to get out of the inning.
And yep, it begins on Tuesday, the SEC tournament in Tuscaloosa. Right now, Arkansas sitting on top. Florida and Alabama have had a stranglehold on the SEC regular season championship since the, I think, believe since 2008. It's been one of one of the other that has won it. Florida with a sweep can share the title and also be the number one seed. So a lot still going on in the SEC this weekend. Florida right now trailing A&M 3-2 in the bottom of the third. This is the first of a three-game set as LSU tries to improve its seed, as does Auburn in the upcoming SEC tournament. And the SEC tournament is something spe special to watch. I think it's like a, a mini Women's College World Series or a prequel to our Women's College World Series because you just have ranked opponents versus ranked opponents almost every single matchup. There's an elimination. There's a championship on the line. It really gets you uh, ready to go for postseason. Right. Absolutely. And again, every pitch we will have it. This is Justi Justice Perry, pardon me, a graduate infielder from Prior Lake, Minnesota. Graduated last year, came back for one more season. Batting in the eighth spot this evening for Coach Dean. And Doyle's been busy over there at third. That is three straight ground outs to Doyle. Yeah, Doyle had a really nice weekend against Arkansas. Played some really tough defense behind her pitching staff, and she's just steady over there. We talked about what Coach Sharina says of her, and I think that carries over to defense. She's just a steady presence that brings it each and every day. Number nine hitter, Aspen Godwin. We already saw her make a nice play behind the dish, grabbing a foul pop-up that she laid out for. It been, been splitting uh, the catching duties, but the job has become her uh, hers as of late, I should say, getting more consistency at the plate. Over in a team that has struggled offensively. They have hit on the season 20 home runs. And Godwin at the plate has four, and that leads her team. Went down and got yeah. that 0-2 pitch. Yeah, unfortunately for Auburn this year, it's just been a struggle to find any kind of consistency at the plate. They had trouble scoring runs, producing runs. Sit at the bottom, batting average and run scored in the SEC. And we talked to Coach Dean about it, and it's come down to a couple situations. They've lost a lot of one, one run games. They've had opportunities and haven't come through. How about that? There's a home run. Home run number five for Godwin. And with one swing of the bat, Auburn's tied it up. There you go right there. Timely hitting out of the nine hole spot. Aspen Godwin. Sits on a pitch up in the zone. He's able to get it out of the park. And I'm going to tell you, hitting the ball out of the park in Baton Rouge, it's humid, it's a deep park, it's difficult. But she makes this look easy. Opens up that front side, clears her body so she can get all that power in on that pitch up. And she elevates it and ties this ball game up. And that was on an 0-2 pitch from Sinceri. Godwin with... Her fifth home run of the year, RBI number 18, that is also second, or actually ties her for first for most RBIs with McKenna Dowell. A little bit more life now in the Auburn dugout. Alyssa Rivera, leadoff hitter, popped out to short her first time up. So humid, humid stuff in Baton Rouge, to say the least, right? And I know that when you were there with Alabama, not exactly the, the results that you would have wanted or most people would have thought you, you would have. I mean, you surprised me when you told me what happened when you played there. Yeah, Tar Tiger Park is a tough place to play, let me tell you. It is a tough place to hit home runs. It seems like the run production just drops for any team that comes into the park that day. But we were 0-6 in my career at Tiger Park. We really struggled wow. there. And in every single one of those games, we were ranked higher than LSU. We were the favorite team. And there's just something about the, this atmosphere and playing here. It, it's difficult to win. So you can't take winning for granted. And that's why it was so impressive to me watching Arkansas be able to win a championship last weekend in this location. 
Arkansas taking two out of three games, and Coach Strina talked about how difficult it was to watch them celebrate. She said she was conflicted because, you know, she's happy for the staff, and uh, Courtney Dyfel uh, is delightful, and her staff, they've worked so hard to build that program, but it's still got to stab you a little bit to see somebody celebrating on your ball field. That's in short center field. Andrews, though, the center fielder had Tidwell step in front of her for the second out. Yeah, it's always a tough thing to see somebody celebrate in your field. And uh, same thing happened to them in 2019, I believe. Alabama won their SEC regular season title in Baton Rouge in 2019 as well. So the last two championships have been decided at Tiger Park. But that's a learning experience. This is a young team that's going to remember those moments and not let it happen again. Yeah, it's bad. It, it sounds good the last, you know, you've had a couple of SEC championships at Tiger Park, but it's not good when it's not the Tigers, when it's not LSU. So you're right, That's that's got to sting a little bit. She said uh, one of her assistants, Howard Dobson, said that maybe she could send a congratulatory card like in July or August when she kind of can sit back and, and, and really, you know, congratulate that Arkansas, that Arkansas staff. They really have done a tremendous job with that program. But she also said she hopes that it inspires her players. Coach Trina said, hey, you know, it's possible. We can do this. We want to celebrate on our field and not have anybody else do it again that isn't wearing purple and gold. Well, I think it's interesting, too, and Arkansas is a great example of what you can do with what you have because, you know, we talk about LSU and Auburn are 12th and 13th in batting average in the SEC, so they're at the bottom. But Arkansas is right at 11. They have a very low batting average, too. They just figured out what works for them, and that's the home run ball. So they've bought into that identity and producing runs in that manner. So they've been able to be successful because they figured out what they were good at, and they excelled in that category. But from batting average standpoint, they're right there with LSU and, and Auburn. 3-1 pitch to Tyler King tries to get the bunt down. Yeah, and that's really surprising. And you probably you know, did some research on that for somebody towards the bottom like that and to win the regular season championship where you have people like, you know, Braxton Burnside and Winnie Malkin and all these, these big boppers. Burnside has just been a revelation this year for them. And then the pitching, you have people like half Autumn Storms when she is on and healthy in the circle. It's, they're a tough team to beat. A little off speed and Pleasance ends the inning, but Aspen Godwin has tied this up. Yeah, gets one up in the zone and says, see a ball, ties this game up. Welcome back, the SEC. These are your big storylines. Arkansas last week in Baton Rouge clinched the share of their first SEC championship by taking two out of three against LSU. The Gators right on their heels need a sweep for a share of the SEC title and to get the number one seed in the tournament. They're down three to two to A&M in the top of the fourth. And we just talked about them. Braxton Burnside. Just a couple behind Bailey Hemphill and Davidson for the most home runs in an SEC season. And Missouri has has had a very interesting year battling Tennessee for a double bye in the SEC tournament. And right now they are trailing Tennessee 3-0. Sar Kali just took that entire uh, package there. But a lot, of, a lot of good stuff going on. Missouri, is, as we mentioned, another team uh, that has uh, come in. Larissa Anderson with that, with that team, the, the, the head coach, putting together a nice season. A really nice season. They are a great offensive team as well. And then out. Oh, that's uh, Antoine. One of the seniors, Taryn Antoine, who was honored before the game. Let's see, was she safe or out, Kayla? Oh, this was close. I, you know, on first look, I thought safe. And, oh, man, it's tight. I think she was safe, though. Barely. By, by a toe. <laughs> yeah. And oh, I yeah, like the she... idea of this lab, uh, trying to get a little soft slap to the pitcher who's left-handed to make a difficult and challenging throw. I mean, that's about as close as it gets. It's a really tight play. But a very quick two outs as Andrews pops out to the catcher. Yeah, that's the one way that Aliyah Andrews can hurt herself is by putting the ball in the air like that and popping up. 
Yeah. Once again, you're just seeing such a mature and composed version of Shelby Lowe late in this, later in this game. After the first inning, after giving up the run, she has been on a roll. Easy outs for her defense and doing work in the circle. Shelby Lowe, the freshman, has retired seven straight, has three strikeouts in the afternoon after Andrews let off with a single stole of ace and eventually scored on the RBI single by Pleasance back in the first inning. But since then, since Pleasant's RBI single, no LSU Tiger has reached base. Briggs popped out to Godwin, the catcher, who made a nice play on a foul ball in the first inning. Stung. Grabbed by the shortstop, the throw over, not in time, but Dowell, who has made some really nice plays over there during her career, almost got her. Dowell is a very ch talented shortstop, and she's got great range. You're going to see her get to this ball quickly in the 5-6 hole, but see her break. just has too much speed down the line. I love the throw. She comes up with a cannon Ooh. from her knees. Makes that play look easy, but once again, you just have speed in the box, and that play is definitely going to go in favor of the hitter. Boy, somebody with average speed would have been out. That throw by the knee, uh, from the knees, as you men mentioned, Justice Perry with a really nice stretch at first. So an infield single for Briggs. First base runner since the first inning. All three hits for LSU have been singles. That one did not leave the infield. Yeah, and I wouldn't be surprised with two outs right here if Sierra Briggs potentially t tries to swipe a bag. She's 10 for 10 on the season, and Godwin wasn't able to throw out Aliyah Andrews earlier in this game. That one hits off of the pitcher low, and then Briggs, a little bit too greedy. Trying to take the extra base is the third out of the inning. Sierra Briggs recognizes that it's two outs, so she's thinking first to third, but a little deflection here plays right into Auburn hands, and they're able to get the third out of the inning over at third base. You are watching the SEC on ESPN. A beautiful Friday evening in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. The Tigers won. The Tigers won. Everything tied up. Uh, Godwin with the, R the uh, home run for Auburn tied it up after Pleasance had the RBI single in the first inning. Pam Ward along with Caleb Rowe joining you on Friday. Just two more days after this left in the regular season before the SEC tournament gets underway in Tuscaloosa on Tuesday. We'll have a lot of folks on site for that, including Caleb Bro. Get back to your old stomping grounds. Be part of the studio presence for ESPN, the SEC Network. Sydney Cox, first pitch, swinging, and the play made by Tidwell. Tidwell showing off the leather right here. That's a really nice reaction to this ball off the end of the bat, so you know it's kind of dying and tailing, and she does a great job of getting over there, and she wants a, a nice dive to complete the catch and get the first out of the inning. McCock swinging at the first pitch. Now Dowell comes up, struck out, swinging her first time against Sanceri. Tyler Tidwell, that second baseman sophomore from Gonzales, Louisiana. Born in Baton Rouge. Just made a nice play for the first out of the inning. And McKenna Dow, very interesting. She has entered the transfer, transfer portal, pardon me, along with Lexi Hanley, who is a pitcher on this squad. Rather unusual to do it during the season. Uh, both of them have their degrees. The scholarships going back to 12 next year after the anomaly with uh, with COVID. You can see a lot of a lot of interesting movement coming up in this off season. Yeah, the transfer portal creates a very interesting dynamic in the sport of softball and in all college sports, really. But 
it, it makes for the opportunity for these student athletes to be able to quickly and easily transfer to a new school, get a new fresh start. But it mixes up rosters pretty aggressively, and you're going to see a swing of talent move from one team to the next. And it's really going to mix things up as we continue to see it grow and, and change and develop over time as it's become a staple of our sport. Softball is not like basketball used to be. You had to wait out a year. That sent the opposite way and a grab for Briggs for the second out. Coming up tomorrow afternoon, more softball heading your way at noon Eastern. That's 11 a.m. Central and local. Number 25 Ole Miss takes on number three Alabama. And then it's Georgia, Mississippi State. Both games right here in the SEC Network and the ESPN app. Final weekend of the regular season, but the SEC Network still all over. All of the action for you. Speaking of Mississippi State, they have been on a roll as of late. They took two in a doubleheader on Wednesday against Tennessee. It's two huge wins for them against a top 25 opponent. And they're currently up on Georgia two to nothing. There's Lindsey Garcia, the DP. Flew to left, flew out to left her first time off. Mississippi State was a team that took a long time to win their first SEC game. They were 0-13, and, and then they beat Texas A&M. April 24th, and uh, been a little bit of a roll that is on its way to the wall. And Garcia gets into second with the two-out double. Seen Auburn do a nice job attacking the up pitch from Shelby Sinceri. There's a couple times that she's left the ball up in the zone, hanging a little bit, and this is an example of the second one that she's really thrown like that. The first one was the pitch to Godwin that was hit out of the park, and Garcia does a good job of just getting on plane of this one and turning it into a quick double with two outs. That's only the second hit for Auburn, the home run by Godwin that you mentioned in the third inning, and now the double. With two away for Garcia. Acker tries to get the bunt down, but it's fielded very nicely by Clark, who throws it over to get the final out. Stranding Garcia. Basketball, kind of a big deal in LSU. Big news last week. More on that when we come back. Ball fans. When LSU hired Kim Mulkey, they weren't just checking a box. No, no, no. They were making a significant investment, and they expect a return. And let me tell you what the return is going to be in the first year. Sold out PMAC multiple times, hosting first and second round games in the NCAA tournament, and they are a Sweet 16 team. Check it out. Keep an eye on Mulkey. Yes, that was Deb Antonelli talking about Kim Mulkey. Yes, she's back, the Tickfaw native, after 21 spectacular years at Baylor, three championships, named and introduced last week as a head coach at LSU. Madison Kepke starting things off. Boy, they're swinging a lot of first pitches. Uh, retired with the fly out into right field. Start off this one. Or pardon me, that was uh, Doyle starting things off in the bottom of the first inning. Big news in Baton Rouge with Kim Mulkey coming back. Her son Kramer Robertson was a very good shortstop on the baseball team, now in the Cardinals organization, playing up in Memphis. Georgia Clark facing Shelby Lowe. This 1-1 game. Yeah, Kim Mulkey. No, I think that's a it's a huge sign that LSU is saying, hey, we're dedicating some time, energy, and money towards women's athletics, and we're making a big push to grow women's sports, not only in the conference but across the country. And, and LSU needed it. They needed to pick me up from basketball, and she's the answer, right? 
<laughs> for them. Uh, yeah, she really one of the biggest hires that has happened in women's basketball in a very long time. And it would be for softball fans, it would be kind of like if if Patty Gasso left Oklahoma or Mike Andrea left Arizona, Murphy at, at Alabama, these people who have been there for so long and have made and, and won national championships. And she has three of them. Oh, in the circle continues to be impressive, giving up just the RBI single back in the first inning. Low through 21 pitches in that first inning in which he gave up a couple of hits and a run. Since then, just 24 total in the last three, really settling in nicely. Yeah, she's boosted her efficiency without a doubt. And I think what worked well early for LSU was jumping over some of the pitches early in the count, attacking the strikes that they're thrown, because she does pound a ton of strikes. But lately, Shelby Lowe's getting the best of them. Boy, that was a beauty right at her knees. And, and this is the challenge when you face Shelby Lowe as a right-handed hitter, is this ball you think is going to be off of the plate, and then right at the last second it just bites and clips the corner, a little backdoor curve that just freezes up a Georgia Clark for the second out of the inning. Boy, and that, that replay showed you perfectly that it, it crossed both of her knees, fourth strikeout for Lowe, who is the true freshman from Carrollton, Alabama. One that's hitting now under 200 against her during the season. Here's Gutierrez who flew out her first time up. Below in the circle now with 171 strikeouts this season against just 24 walks. Leads the SEC in strikeout to walk ratio, as you might expect. Here's a bouncing ball to Cox to retire the side. Shelby Low looking good in this 1 1 ball game. It is the first podcast of mayhem. I love the parody in all the conferences. Kenny Gajewski has yet to be Oklahoma. You're not going to be very happy that they're showing up in your backyard. And I've never heard Bruins brag about sharing a title. I think that's what mayhem's all about is crowning new champions. The road to Oklahoma City starts now. Seven inning podcast among the things we're talking about. Yes, we're all excited about mayhem beginning. What else are we going to hear on that, Kayla, bro? Yeah, we definitely preview the Bedlam series. So Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, that's going to be a big one. Oklahoma is their really last true test before the postseason. And, and, you know, the other thing that we get to talk about a lot was Arkansas's big conference victory and winning the regular season championship in the SEC. We also talk about Clemson's opportunity to do that in the ACC. If they sweep Syracuse this weekend, it is all theirs. They will be the new ACC champions. And again, similar to Arkansas, their rise was so fast. Starting off that program and already have the potential to win a championship is a really big deal for Coach Rittman in that program. Yeah, Coach Rittman coming over. I had so, so many great years at Stanford and boy, Clemson. I, this, you, we, you talk about that's a good parallel as uh, Kepke starts things off here in the top of the fifth inning, 1-1 one, one ball game. Florida and Alabama and the SEC absolutely owning the regular season championships for the last decade or so. And here comes Clemson. Which it's been Florida State and then everybody else. You know, Georgia Tech won a, few, won a few years ago, but you know, uh, Coach Lonnie Alameda has done such a tremendous job with that program. Since Sari gets the strikeout, and now Clemson making a lot of noise in the ACC. Going to be fun. Going to be a great NCAA tournament coming up as well. 
Yeah, and a big piece of that has been their pitcher. That's also a hitter in Val Valerie Cagle, who's hitting above 400, has around a one ERA. I mean, she's so studly. And similar to Shelby Sinceri, does a lot for her team. And I like that off-speed pitch from Shelby Sinceri that she's starting to sprinkle in and throw a little bit more often. That's kind of been her equalizer against this offense. Has a couple of strikeouts drifting over nicely from second base. Tidwell gets Perry in foul territory for the second out. And we're seeing both of these pitchers for these staffs inducing some very easy outs for their defense. I mean, we've seen some routine ground balls. We've seen some routine pop flies. There really hasn't been that many hard hit balls with the exception of the Godwin home run. Strike Aspen Godwin on an 0-2 pitch. Hit it out of the ballpark in the third inning to tie this game up at one apiece. That's a very quick inning as Godwin pops out. How about a five-pitch inning that time for Sinceri? Tied up going to the bottom of the fifth. I'm king of the mountain. It's the NCAA Softball Selection Show. Gets a shot to go to Oklahoma City. You got to win or they're going home. That does it. Back to the Women's College World Series. Feeling pretty confident right now. When we reveal the bracket for the NCAA tournament. I'm king of the mountain. Oh, yeah. Selection Sunday is coming. Let's take a look at the RPI Top 10 LSU with that brutal schedule at number four. And, yeah, you see a lot of SEC schools in there, don't you? Alabama at number one. Oklahoma right now taking on Oklahoma State, as we mentioned. And the RPI a big factor. But some other factors, you think, Kayla, in this very unusual season when the committee gets together to decide uh, who goes where and what the seedings are. Yeah, I think the eye test is going to be so important. And I'm looking at this RPI, and this is a big weekend for Oklahoma to try and boost theirs, getting some wins over Oklahoma State and vice versa. Because I think when you look at the eye test, UCLA, Oklahoma look like the best two teams in the country. That being said, where Oklahoma sits behind you know, the six teams in front of them it may not be the case. So it'll be interesting what the committee does, especially with teams from the Big Ten who didn't play any out-of-conference opponents at all this season. They stayed strictly within their conference. So where do you put them? Because you just don't have any comparisons really beyond their little bubble. And have, talking to some of the coaches in the Big Ten, that's they echo your sentiments uh, exactly, that the committee does take that into consideration. Because of COVID, they decided to limit travel. Sinceri skies it into the glove of Cox. Because of COVID, the, uh, the, the Big Ten doing something very unusual. First several games, everybody went down to Florida to play some games because it's a little bit chilly up in Michigan and Illinois and Minnesota and all those places. And then uh, literally no non-conference games playing the four-game series on the weekends. You know, and when I look at that Big Ten conference, I see them, and they are a very strong pitchers conference. I think they have some good teams. You look at Michigan with Alex Sirocco, Megan Bobian. Both have really strong ERAs. Go to Minnesota. You can see Amber Pfizer, Daniel Williams from Northwestern. They, it's a strong pitchers league. I question how good the hitters in our, are in that league, though. Again, Selection Sunday. Coming up a week from Sunday. We're Morgan Cummins, one of four strikeout victims against Shelby Lowe in the circle. The dynamic freshman leads the SEC in ERA, strikeout to walk ratio, and the fewest walks per seven innings. Another ball up in the air. Two in a row for Cox to catch it low is rolling. She has been on fire all day. You can see her really late, subtle movement that just causes these LSU players to swing and miss, to be frozen, to have miss hits, pop-ups, easy outs for her defense. I mean, it is so sharp, her spin on her, on her pitches. It is just so good to watch. And I love the composure. She's always smiling out there in the circle. She doesn't let anything phase her. She gives up a hit. She gives up a run early in this ballgame. No big deal. I'm going to go out and do my thing in the circle. 
Yeah, it really does seem calm. Here's Taryn Antoine, who was called out on a bunt back to low. There you see a little, little smile. She comes in to talk to her catcher, Godwin. Low threw 21 pitches in the first inning. Since then, a 10-pitch inning, an 8-pitch inning, an 11-pitch inning, and then six pitches in this inning. That's a little dribbler. Antoine has speed. Godwin can't get her. And the senior who was honored before this game gets herself an infield hit. This is a nice shot by Taryn Antoine. You know, the whole goal when she slaps this ball, she's trying to get a miss hit. She's trying to pound the ball to the ground, and she does just that and finds her way aboard. And that's so important because Aaliyah Andrews is behind her. And with speed on the bases and what Aaliyah Andrews is able to do at the plate, being able to pop a hard slap into a gap for a triple can score a run and change this ball game really quickly. Singled, stole a base, and scored on Pleasant's RBI single, the only run so far for LSU. That was back in the first inning. Andrews has been a staple in this lineup. LSU with five hits, all of them by their lefties off the lefty. Pitcher low. I think that's what's really interesting when you break down what Lowe is able to do in the circle. Righties actually don't do as well as lefties against Shelby Lowe. Lefties have a higher batting average, and you can see with the success that the lefties have had comparatively to the righties today, that's been consistent all season long for her. So and, and I really think. Hits Go ahead. Yeah, no, I think the equalizer is the backdoor curve to righties. I think that's one of her best pitches that she's able to clip the outside corner, be really deceptive, and that pitch doesn't really work as well against lefties because it'll break back over the middle of the plate. I was going to say all four strikeouts have come by right-handed batters. And all the hits from lefties for LSU. Andrews in the offseason started working on her power game a lot with Sandra Simmons, former LSU Tiger, now on the uh, in her third year as the volunteer coach. And coach Trina gives Sandra a lot of the credit for trying to remake Andrews. That's a terrific throw down by Godwin to get Antoine and end the inning. Picking up your team, Aspen Godwin throws an absolute dime right on the money to get the third out. Still a tie ball game here in Baton Rouge. Tie ball game here, Tigers versus Tigers. It was Taylor Pleasance for LSU that got things started in the first inning, picking up an RBI and Leah Andrews scoring. But in the third inning, Aspen Godwin Hits one deep out of the ballpark to tie this thing up. And after that, it's really been a strong pitcher's, pitcher's duel today. Shelby Lowe, the freshman for Auburn, and Shelby Tinseri have been going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. They've elevated their games as this game has continued to go on. And see right there, Tinseri only given up two hits on the day so far. Yeah, one of them was that solo home run uh, by Godwin, who just ended the last half inning with a terrific throwdown to get... Antoine, who is trying to steal second base. Pam Ward and Caleb Bro joining you on this lovely Friday evening in Baton Rouge. Then the two Shelbys certainly have been delivering in the circle. Since Sari, the senior who graduated today. Giving up a double and a home run, and that is it so far. Both of these teams have been offensively challenged during the season. They've relied on defense and Boy, Doyle is just solid as a rock over there at third. Yeah, I think this is what's impressive about Shelby Sinceri's work today. She's trusting her defense behind her. She knows that's her bread and butter. A little hot shot over to Doyle. She makes it look easy. Clean throw across the field for the first out. But this is because she's been attacking the strike zone and trusting that late break on her spin. She's a true down ball pitcher that will induce a lot of easy outs. If she does, does her job, and that's clip the corners, and keep spinning it up, spinning it up, and she's doing just that. Another play by Doyle, who was 
playing in, gets Cox on just one pitch. Bundesliga is coming on ESPN and the ESPN app tomorrow. Dortmund hosting Leipzig. Dortmund's on four of their last five. Everybody knows that. That match starts tomorrow at 9.30 Eastern in the morning. Pre-match coverage begins at 9. Quality soccer coming your way from Germany. When you're talking about the pitchers, as Shelby Senseri, five one-pitch outs in the last three innings. So they're swinging early. Putting the ball in play, but as you mentioned, the Tiger defense coming up and, and getting people out. Yeah, this might be a situation where both of these teams need to kind of go back to the drawing board and say, are we being a little too aggressive? Should we be more patient at the plate? Should we be a little bit more selective? Because there's a balance. I like it when hitters go out there and they see a pitch they want and they attack it. However, that has to stop being the case if you're not producing, if you're not coming up with hits. And the way that these pitchers just mowing over batters pretty quickly and efficiently. They gotta find ways to slow the game down as an offense and try and make the pitchers work a little bit harder. And that's gonna be a tough challenge because both of these pitchers, what makes them so good and makes them so good today is it's the deception piece. The pitches out of the hand look great, but it's the late break, the sharp movement, the change in speeds that's getting these batters. That one lifted into left field, but Briggs was positioned perfectly. Another quick one, two, three inning for Senseri as we go to the bottom of the sixth. Welcome back, LSU and Auburn tied up at one apiece as we go to the bottom of the sixth inning. And one of the main themes for LSU this year has been their strength of schedule. Coach Torina says it's the story of our season. And Graham Hayes, our former terrific colleague at ESPN, tweeted this. Somebody mentioned this, and the data looks right. Not only is LSU number one in strength of schedule, all but certain to enter the tournament with one of the best strengths of schedules ever. Nothing close that he could find going back to 2007. And we spoke to Coach Torina. Uh, earlier this week, and and that was just one of the, the emphasis, uh, one of the emphases on her season. You see, by far the number one strength of schedule, four in the RPI, and they are uh, trying to close out the season, improve their seed, and certainly hope to to host in the uh, in the regional. It is really interesting because LSU didn't plan for this tough of a schedule, but because of COVID protocols and weather delays or whatever it may be, they had to rearrange a lot of their schedule earlier in the year, and it didn't really go well with playing an easier schedule. It made them play the tougher teams more times or add play teams like Alabama to play yeah. in the preseason. And, you know, one of the things that's so challenging is this is a pretty young LSU team, and when you play that tough of a strength of schedule, week in and week out, you just... It's so hard to find any kind of continu continuity, any kind of consistency in your lineup. Confidence goes down. It's just so tough. So how do you keep the morale up? How do you keep your players keeping the confidence they need to be successful? A and that was something that stood out to me from Beth Tarina too, where she said when they started playing Texas, which was a few weeks in, she said we need to throw out that nobody's going to hit above 400 on this team. Nobody's going to have mm. a sub-1 ERA. Our schedule is too tough. So once you realize that, move on. Don't dwell on the fact that maybe your numbers don't look as pretty as they would on another season. Find ways to win now. Leah Andrews starts things off in the sixth. She was in the batter's box when Antoine was thrown out trying to steal second in the fifth inning. And she was talking about that, how, you know, she said, she really didn't realize how young her team was. Had players for the half season or so last year. But, but then she figured out, you know, they never even played in an SEC game yet. They just had non-conference games last year. And she said it really was a tough mental challenge. She said we're running five or, kids, five or six kids out there every day who have never played not only this level of competition, but this level of competition day after day after day where there's really no break. And the SEC is really where you're molded as a softball player. It's where you face the, the toughest of the tough, again, like you said, week in and week out. And that's where you learn about yourself. You learn how to fight adversity. It's not just smooth sailing every weekend. It's a grind. 
and, and some players rise to the occasion, and that's how you find out who the best players in the country are, is how they do in conference play. Full count now to Andrews, one of the few deep counts that Lowe has gotten to since the first inning when she threw 21 pitches and gave up the only run of the game. RBI single by Pleasance that scored Andrews after she stole the base. Good pitcher's duel. This is a good old-fashioned 1-1 one -one ball game in the sixth inning. We don't see this very often anymore, Caleb Rowe. <laughs> That's right. And if I'm LSU, I'm circling this part of the lineup. All the lefties up in a row, this is where you have to make an impact. And instead, Andrews pops out to Kepke at third to start off the sixth inning. Leah one for three so far today. And the Shelbys in the circle have given up a grand total of zero walks. And that's a fantastic stat. And that right there against Aaliyah Andrews is how you get her out. You pop her up. She gets herself mm -hmm. out. That's an easy way to deal with somebody like her. The only time that she's put the ball on the ground today, she's gotten a base hit. Yep. Briggs Same pops thing right out there. on the first pitch. <laughs> Yeah, that's the second time we've seen Sierra Briggs try and put a bunt down and pop up. And once again, those are just two easy outs. And a nice job by Shelby Lowe to understand what the job to do is, and it's to let the lefties get themselves out. So how much credit do you give to the to them getting themselves out versus the, what the pitch? We can't talk about anything because people are going to swing at first <laughs> pitches, and Pleasance this time flies out to left. Like they have somewhere to go. Another quick one, two, three inning. Let's go to the seventh. Welcome back. This is the SEC on ESPN. A 1-1 ball game in Baton Rouge already going to the top of the seventh inning. And hour and a half into this game, the two Shelby. Shelby Lowe for Auburn, Shelby Sanceri for LSU, pitching so well. Neither one have given up a walk, just six strikeouts between them. Sanceri's last 11 pitches for LSU have produced seven outs. So Auburn going after a lot of first pitches, not having much success, but the same is true with Lowe in the circle for Auburn. Yeah, and, and there's been one error in this ball game, and it came in the first inning. So since the first inning, really, this game has been so efficient. It's flown by, and you got credit to the performances in the circle from both the Shelbys today. And what's this? We have ourselves a base hit into the outfield. Great hustle by Dowell. It was bobbled a little bit by Andrews, and McKenna took the extra base. Seen it all day long, jumping over the first pitch. McKenna Dowell does a really nice job. This is a really good pitch to hit, a nice strike. And as soon as she sees any kind of mini little bobble out there by Aaliyah Andrews, picks up second base really quickly to put herself in scoring position. Third double of the year for Dowell, second double of the game for Auburn. They just have three hits, a couple of doubles, and that home run that you mentioned, Godwin hitting it in the third. Now a pinch runner comes in. And it is Kaylee Horton who comes in, senior from Jasper, Alabama, who started her career at Ole Miss. And what a big opportunity for Auburn. This is the first time that we've seen the leadoff lead hitter get to second base with no outs. And Garcia! Boy, she's robbed over there at the net by Clark. You know, and this is an interesting strategy. I bunt her over, get her in a position to be able to get a sack fly. But this is a really nice play. Going up against the net, finding the ball, knowing where she is, knowing it's her part, and making a really great play. And that's a big out in this inning right here. And it keeps the uh, pinch runner Horton over at first. And now they've got the pinch runner. 
And able to tag her out. Packer able to go over to second on the play, but Horton, who just came in to run for Dowell, caught in a rundown. This is a really nice job. A hard look back by Amanda Doyle. And Horton just sits there. And as soon as Doyle recognizes that Horton doesn't make any move to go back to second base, it's an easy pickoff play over two. And a close play, they almost got her at second base. Packer doing the smart base running and getting herself into scoring position, though. But again, this is where Auburn made some mistakes. I think with the opportunity to sacrifice bunt somebody over, do it, take the chance, especially since Sinceri is a down ball pitcher, so most likely you're going to be able to get the ball on the ground, advance a runner to third. And it makes it a lot easier to score from 60 feet than it does from second base. Now two away with the runner on second for Kepke. And just and then taking off and safe. Packer heads down to third. Packer showing off her speed right here. No hesitation. Tries to catch Cummins sleeping a little bit behind the plate. Beautiful head first slide into third to move herself closer to scoring. And just as you mentioned, get yourself 60 feet closer, and she has indeed done that. Tarina comes out into the circle. Jump is so important at second base. You can see Michaela Packer times this up. And that is about as close as you can get. And I like at second base the runner being aggressive because that's a hard call for the umpire to make to be able to see when the pitcher releases the ball and when your foot leaves the base. I was always taught growing up to leave a little bit early at second base because, again, just the angle of the umpire, the release of the pitcher, it's too hard to see in one smooth shot, and that doesn't get called very often. So I love that she has a beautiful lead, a great jump at second base. Yeah, because remember, unlike baseball, you cannot leave until the ball leaves the pitcher's hand, or if you're like Caleb Bro, you want to cheat a little bit and take off just a tick early. Whatever you can get, right? Better than right. advantage. That's right, any inch. Yeah, that's right. Packer took advantage of that. Just to clean things up as uh, Kepke's at the plate, uh, uh, Dowell's hit was ruled a single, and then the error on Andrews advanced her to second, so not a double, but an, uh, a single. And then the E8. Second error committed by LSU. And that ends it. Six pitch inning. They get a hit and still it's only a six pitch inning. Let's go to the bottom of the seven tied up. I'm king of the mountain. Welcome, yes, already we are going to the bottom of the seventh inning. LSU and Auburn tied up at one apiece. The last five half innings both pitchers have thrown just 31 pitches total. A lot of first pitch swings, contact, and outs going on here. An RBI single in the first inning for LSU by Taylor Pleasance. Then the game tying Aspen Godwin homer in the third. That is all we have so far. Shelby Lowe, Shelby Sanceri. There's Shelby Lowe getting it done. Pam Ward along with Caleb Bro on this. Lovely Friday evening in Baton Rouge. Amanda Doyle's been busy out in the uh, out at third base today. Five putouts for her. First of a three-game series. Already had some exciting finishes on this Friday night in the SEC. Florida. Fell behind early in this game to Texas A&M, but just walked them off in the bottom of the seventh. Yeah, Charlotte Eccles, you know, late in the game, it's so tough. It's such a tough decision, but, you know, you look at it, and how do you get to a situation where you pitch to her with the potential to walk it off? It's, it's crazy, but that's the way... That's the way our league's been this year. People are just mm -hmm. beating up on each other. You you have to go to walk off to win because it's just so competitive. And remember, if, if Florida does sweep A&M, they will get the number one seed in the upcoming SEC tournament. Arkansas, they're 
regular season already done after taking two of three in Baton Rouge last weekend to get at least a share of the SEC championship. First time they have done that. And those having a conversation with Patrick Murphy earlier this year when they were going to play Arkansas, who has, you know, Burnside. And we said, why do people pitch to her? And he said it. he doesn't think, Patrick Murphy says he doesn't think intentional passes are used enough in softball. Hit on the nose. Packer couldn't come up with it, and Doyle gets into second to start the seventh. Yeah, when you need to use an intentional walk, it can be really beneficial, but going on to this swing, and hit a Doyle up in the zone. It's outside. She gets her barrel there, pulls it, hooks around it a little bit, but the key is that her barrel is so level, and Mikhail Packer, what an effort in center field. We've seen her make some dynamic plays out there, showing off the range, but barely not able to hang on to this one, and a huge pickup for the Tigers. First time that LSU has gotten a leadoff runner on since Aaliyah Andrews single to start the game. Stole the base and eventually scored, so Doyle doing her job. And now the big pinch for Doyle runner too. for Doyle, yep. No, yeah, it's her senior day, <laughs> honoring her. And it is Akia Times who comes in. Representing the winning run here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Here's Georgia Clark. Pardon me, Akaya Times is over there at third base. LSU one for two with runners in scoring position, so not a lot of opportunities. And again, the first time they've had a runner on second base since the first inning when they got their only run. Trying to get the bunt down, Times. Over to third easily, Clark gets the job done. And I love this move. It's a great call from Coach Torina to be able to sacrifice the run and move the runner over because it gives an opportunity for the next couple batters in your lineup to hit a sack fly. At times is one of those super seniors who came back to be a pinch runner. We've talked to head coaches who talk about that sacrifice. That come back, you're not going to get a lot of playing time, but Kaya taking the opportunity to come back, and she is the winning run now with just one away. Shelby Lowe has just been brilliant, giving up just one run on six hits. Raylene Gutierrez took a hack at that one. A little <laughs> check swing up in the zone, but she wanted it, looked good, and then she's like, oh, man, nope, it's not, it's not there. i got to hold myself up a little bit. But that was a swing to try and win this ball game. Yeah, it certainly did, like a, a little bit of an anxious swing, trying to, to be the hero. That one's up in the air, should be deep enough, caught in center by Packer, the tag and the winning run. Times comes in on the Gutierrez sack fly RBI. And that right there is exactly why you sacrifice that runner over and you bunt in that situation with a runner in scoring position. Your offense hasn't had enough run production, so that is smart, intelligent play right there from LSU and the reason they're gonna walk away with a victory in game one of this series. Just smart. And, and Raylene Gutierrez already had a deep fly ball early in this game. So you knew she could do it off of Shelby Lowe. She just had to do it one more time. And a tough loss for Lowe, who falls to 13 and eight on the season. Shelby Sanceri, on the day she graduated from college, picks up win number eight with the uh, complete game, just giving up the uh, that home run to Godwin. But LSU, we had a great shot of the Times family. They are from Louisiana, Brusley, Louisiana, and they got to see their daughter come in and score the game-winning run. So a good start for LSU as they try to improve their position in the SEC with just two games left now in the regular season. This is a really nice job. This is just simple hitting. You get a ball that's elevated. You know that you can hit it deep enough in this park. All you got to think about is I got to get it to the grass. And she does just that. Makes for a, an easy tag up and scoring opportunity. 
And this is a big deal for LSU. This is a much needed win, a victory where they needed to come down to the wire and understand what it takes to win ball games against a really quality opponent and a quality pitcher. Shelby Lowe, you yeah. have to tip your cap to what she was able to do today. Shelby Sinceri, they were tough for seven innings. Defense was tough behind them, but it came down to that one timely hit, and LSU came up with it. And yeah, Doyle coming up with a big double to lead off this inning. The sack bunt you referenced by Clark, and then Gutierrez with the sack fly RBI scored the pinch runner times. And speaking of time, this game took an hour and 40 minutes. Lightning quick. As uh, Beth Torina all smiles, losing the two out of the three games last weekend, and a great way to start off this weekend series for LSU. Yeah, Beth Torina, that was one thing, is that she gave Arkansas credit because when it came down to the wire, they just came up with the big hits that they needed to come up with, and it was frustrating to see somebody celebrate on your field and win a championship on your field, but to be able to come back in a close game like this, find a way to win, rely on those seniors who's it's senior weekend, of course Amanda Doyle would come up with the big hit in the seventh inning to come through for her team. And this is exactly the kind of momentum that they need to roll into the SEC tournament is understanding what it takes to execute and win with the staff that they have and with the offense that they do have. All right, and we are joined now by Beth Torina, the head coach for LSU. Boy, that was a quickie coach, just an hour and 40 minutes uh, to get through this first. Uh, can you talk about what you saw from Shelby Sanceri there in the circle? Yeah, we didn't want you guys to have to work too hard tonight, so we're trying to get you Thank out you. early. So uh, <laughs> Shelby Sanceri was great. I mean, the one mistake, you know, I think that she made, but I thought she was really good. She does what she does for us every time she goes out, gives us a solid, consistent performance. She's very brave for us in game one every weekend, and I I'm proud of the performance she had tonight. And, Coach, it really came down to two timely hits, one from Taylor Pleasants back in the first and then one right there from Gutierrez to get the sack fly. What does that say about your offense, about finding ways to win and just coming up when it matters? That was the conversation all week last week, was truly just finding ways to win, passing the bat to the hitter that's hot, and just finding ways to get it done. I mean, a sacrifice bond on a pitch as well up in the zone was a huge moment right there, too, something that had been tough for us throughout the game uh, by Georgia Clark. So I think a big moment. And then, of course, Amanda Doyle has that senior day magic today. So that was fun to see. Yeah, and what does a win like this do? It's a tough opponent. Shelby Lowe did such a good job in the circle for Auburn. What does a, a, a win like this against a quality pitcher do for your guys' confidence moving forward to try and get wins two and three moving forward? Yeah, I think just creating files in our brain of the best pitching, and Shelby Lowe is one of the best. I can't imagine the future she's going to have. She's fantastic. So, you know, just finding ways to win against a pitcher like that, it takes execution of things like a sacrifice spot in the last inning, like a sacrifice fly. I think those things are so important important and they're so valuable down the stretch in the postseason where we all know anything can happen. Yep, some good quality fundamental softball. Uh, Coach Rena, thank you very much. Two more games left to go and we'll see you at the SEC tournament after that. Thank you guys so much. Go Tigers. And the Tigers did indeed go tonight, winning uh, winning this game by the final of 2-1. to one. So that is the uh, 30th win of the season now for LSU. Auburn has now lost four straight games and they've got to try to figure things out again tomorrow. Yeah, and I think they're going to go to another freshman in the circle, Matty Penta, another great arm. So LSU's going to have another challenge tomorrow, and the same with Auburn offensively because most likely you're going to see Ali Caponin, who's really the true ace of this LSU staff. So we might see another pitcher's duel tomorrow. It's going to be a good weekend series against these two teams, though. And, of course, uh, SEC Extra ESPN app is where you can continue to find all of your uh, SEC softball for Caleb Bro, I'm Pam Ward, Seth Miller, our producer, all the fine folks uh, who